Leslie Adams is the catering manager at Dean Magna School in Gloucestershire. She's been invited to London, along with head teacher Rob Broadbridge, to a rather special lunch. Today, she's joining other school caterers at Clarence House. Leslie and Rob head inside to await the arrival of their host, the Prince of Wales. The Prince has long been an advocate of healthy, balanced diets, especially in children. With an organic farm on his Highgrove estate and his enthusiasm for the slow food movement, he's now lending his support to the drive to improve Britain's school meals. He's holding today's reception to thank school caterers for their hard work and to inspire them for the future. We met Fridge Charles. He was uh, interested to know that we buy locally, local produce. Um, told him that he, we had our eggs off my son, which were free range. <laughs> um, and he just said to keep up the good work. I asked Fitz Charles, I, I said I was told that he was cooking the meal, and he said, if you believe that, you'll believe anything. <laughs> then it's back to school. <laughs> Leslie was invited to Clarence House in recognition of the dramatic changes that have been made to the menus at Dean Magna. When Leslie joined the school, the menu wasn't particularly healthy. At the time, we were doing uh, burgers, sausages, chips every day, which was on the menu when I first started here eight years ago. And the new head decided he wanted to change the menu to give the, the students a healthier food. Dean Magna was in the vanguard of the current national drive to improve school meals, introducing healthier menus several years ago. It's, it's gone back to the old-fashioned roast meals, really, now, and uh, trying to make the students healthy. It's probably more enjoyable for me. You know, you're not taking things like the freezer and just throwing it in the oven. You're actually making it from scratch daily, fresh, so it is more interesting. One of the new additions was a jacket potato oven. When I first started here, we sold about four jacket potatoes a day because they were done in the ordinary oven. Since we've had this, we sell about between 50 and 100. But this, and we also brought the soup kettle as well to make homemade soup. With the introduction of the new Eat Better, Do Better school food standards, all school caterers are now having to offer students healthier meals. Many caterers, like Leslie, are largely self-taught. About 26 years ago, I first did the City and Guilds um, certificate. And, you know, there is a lot of opportunity now for training. Leslie's keen to pass on her skills to others. Watching Leslie prepare a simple stir-fry makes Tracy more versatile. And I've got the noodles on. There's some noodles over there. OK? And it's just doing a selection of vegetables to put in there. It's uh, another variety of uh, vegetarian dish. It's got a nice sauce with it and loads of veg. And the students, they've, uh, they really like this. OK, Trace, could you drain the noodles for me, please? Would you like to put the noodles in there? And then the black bean sauce. So now it's just stirring it to make sure all the vegetables get covered with the sauce and are cooked properly. OK, so do you want to take over doing it? Stir it a bit. It's going to be about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We need to get, all the, bro get the broccoli cooking as well. OK? It seems quite simple and easy to make and a good way of getting the vegetables into the children as well. It's nice to try my time at different things and to learn how to make all these new dishes. Leslie's keen to take advantage of new training being made available to school caterers. She's travelled to nearby Western Supermare for a cook's conference that's touring the country. It's the first event of its kind and promises to be a different kind of training. It's very important these days to get as much training as possible and you know, development for the future. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm sure it's going to be a really good day. Restaurateur and chair of the new school food trust, Prue Leith, addresses the South West's assembled school caterers. And we know that some of you struggle because you tell us. You struggle with perhaps um, the new regulations, with tight budgets, with quite often with um, uninterested or unhelpful head teachers and uncooperative catering management perhaps or difficult parents. 
And of course, we all know that some of you struggle with children who don't like fruit and veg. Afterwards, all the delegates take part in peer-to-peer -peer discussions about how best to change eating habits in their schools. Change that around a bit, use a different fish, and it's made me more aware that there's schools out there that still haven't achieved what we've achieved, and they still might need a lot of help. And I can go back as well. I've got loads of ideas that I can go back with now that I've picked up here and by other people. How, can you How do the other delegates propose changing change. eating habits in their schools? I think a lot of it's to the parents, because the parents feed their kids at the end of the day. So they're looking for familiar foods. Yeah. I think you've got to educate the parents as well. Yeah. I think it's really important to involve the children and maybe work through the school council and get them to work with their parents so that it, it is a whole school approach and it's not just coming from any one person. So that the children themselves can um, interview each other and find out what the issues are, why maybe children aren't having the school meals and vice versa. I know ahead is that if, if they find that they've got like a certain meal and it's not going very well, then they'll take a couple of um, spoons and they'll go around to the children and ask the children to um, taste it. And I was just going to say that whenever I've done fruit and veg promotions with children, they often say, no, I don't like it because they're not familiar with it. Yeah. But they just have a little bit and they like it. And I found that if one has it, then the next yeah, one yeah, has yeah, it. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of um, peer like encouragement. It's lunchtime. What does Leslie think of the conference so far? I really enjoyed this morning. It's nice to get all the dinner laces together and exchange ideas. What have the other delegates picked up? It's maybe a few more ideas how to get the children eat, eating hot meals more than anything. We don't usually get the chance to get together, so it's been very interesting. If you've got good communication and put your head behind you, I think you stand a better chance of putting healthy eating into practice in your school. This afternoon we've got a cookery demonstration, um, and I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait to see what the chef prepares. TV chef Simon Rimmer has come along to demonstrate some healthy new recipes that the delegates might like to try back at their schools. His first dish is turkey ragu with gnocchi. But I think gnocchi is one of those things that um, is much underrated. And it's basically a potato pasta. What we do first of all, again, a little touch of oil into our pan. Thank you, Jules. There's our turkey mince, dead cheap. Really, really, really cheap. In it goes, it's just your normal way you'll do things. But now the other ingredients to go into it, as you expect from any normal kind of type of ragu. We've just got some onion, we've got some carrots, and we've got some celery. We're looking at cheap ingredients here, ingredients that are accessible to everybody. And you can make this in huge, huge quantities. All of the ingredients go into there. Now, gnocchi goes into the boiling water. Whether you do them big or whether you do them small, the time when they're cooked is when they rise to the surface and hold their own weight. We're going to stick it straight into our sauce. Look at that. I mean, that is a good-looking dish. All kids love pasta dishes. It works beautifully. Simon has something unusual in store for pudding. We're doing chocolate and beetroot muffins. Weird or what? But they work absolutely brilliantly. I think it'd be quite a good thing to do if you get kids to eat these and then try and guess what the secret ingredient is. And I'd be surprised if anybody can guess it, really. There we go, beautiful. That's all sifted through. So we make a well in the centre of our dry ingredients, which is our cocoa powder, our baking powder, our flour um, and the sugar. Put in this beautiful beetroot. These go into our magic oven, which is here. Ha! Ah, sift by magic out they come. Look at that. They're brilliant. Now look, they just look like normal chalky muffins. What does Simon see as central to contemporary training? Knowledge of ingredients, knowledge of the way in which food works. Um, I think that there's a very big difference between saying, right, I need to make something that I can feed 1,500 people with without the consequence of saying, however, is that nutritionally balanced? And I think it's about kind of giving that information and maybe giving some kind of like hints and tips in terms of how you can improve those skills. After today, is Leslie tempted to try Simon's recipes? Yeah, I'll definitely use them at DMAGNIS School and maybe tweak them a little bit to suit the stu students that we've got there. But yeah, it was really interesting. It's the following week. Encouraged by the conference, Leslie's decided to test Simon's recipes on a small group of students to see if the dishes would be suitable for the whole school. She starts by preparing the turkey and gnocchi. Potato, um, then added an egg, flour and seasoning. Just made it into a dough. Then we've got to cook it in some water. 
With the gnocchi boiling, she turns to the ragu. First, she seals the turkey and puts it to one side. Then, she chops the vegetables and lightly fries them. She then adds tomato puree, chicken stock and the turkey. And we need to bring it up to the boil, leave it to simmer now for 25 minutes. While the turkey is cooking, she begins the next new dish, grilled cod with a mixed bean salad. To begin, she lightly seasons the fish. It says put it into a grill, but we haven't got a grill, so it's going to be in the oven for a couple of minutes. Just doing this fish, and then you just got to use these mixed beans, mint sauce, and some lemon juice. So, enough. does Leslie think these recipes will be a success? I haven't a clue. I'm not sure whether the students will like them or not, so we try them on. It's tasting time. What do the students think of the turkey and gnocchi? Um, it's quite spicy. Different, it's nice. I like it. Quite full of flavour. <laughs> Very nice. I think most people don't want to try anything new that often. I just want to stick to like what they actually have. Next, they try the fish. I quite like the beans. I don't like it. I like the, like the seasonings and stuff, and it's nice with yeah. the pepper. Which of the two dishes do they prefer? Lucky. 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 Yeah, I'd have a bit of both. <laughs> Next, Leslie's got some younger students coming in to try the beetroot muffins. She's going to keep the unusual ingredient a secret. I've added some raspberries, so you know, they don't look too bad, so hopefully they won't you know, they be taste of beetroot in it. And apparently they used beetroot during the war years when there was a short supply of chocolate to sweeten the cake. They are. Beetroot and chocolate muffins. In comes her first food critic. Will he guess what the mystery ingredient is? Is it coconut? I don't know. Wanna lift that and have a look? What's oh. that? Is that? What is it? Do you know what that is? No. Beetroot. 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 <laughs> mm. Oh my god. Whoa. Is that like a radish or something? Beetroot. So, what do the students think? It's actually quite nice, even though it doesn't sound nice. I don't think that uh, that would be in a muffin. It's a new way of getting vegetables into kids. <laughs> Rejuvenated by having attended the conference, Leslie's arranged for Karen and Tracy to do a two-day course for school caterers that she went on last year. But there's some more uh, free places available for the Ashlyn's Training Kitchen. So it means that you two can go on the course now. What will we actually do? So you all cook something different. There's usually about 15 of you that go into pairs. Um, all cook something different and then at lunch time you sit down and eat it. But there's also demonstrations showing you how to include vegetables in the dishes. They'll all benefit from having had the same training. Everybody have picked up the same ideas. So when I say to you, well, can you make some base sauce? You'll be able to do it. You'll know what I mean then. With the success of the new dishes, what's Leslie's view of ongoing training for school caterers? The most important thing I think these days is to go is to as much training as you possibly can. There's loads and loads out there. Take advantage of all the training courses because it's changing all the time. So just go for it. You'll always be learning something, always.